The final common Altium error that I'm going to show you how to deal with are incorrect footprints in your design. And what we're concerned about here is when you choose a component that for some reason you've selected a PCB layout footprint that does not match up to what the physical component you ordered will be. And this could be something as obvious as ordering a surface mount component and placing down a through hole uh, PCB footprint for that component. There's going to be some incompatibility. You're not gonna be able to build your board. So it's actually your responsibility to ensure that the component footprints you've selected match the components you've ordered. And there's a step-by-step -step process to check this that involves looking at your schematic, your PCB, and the data sheet for each component that you wish to use. So the way I tend to do this is a two-step process. I match the schematic pins to my PCB pads and make sure that they're correct based on the data sheet pinouts. And then the other thing to check is that the sizes and dimensions of your footprints match up to the data sheet drawings that are provided to you. So I'm going to uh, show you how to step-by-step -step solve this problem with a faulty MOSFET footprint. So let's take a look at an example project in Altium. So here we have an example uh, schematic that has one faulty MOSFET footprint. Uh, the MOSFET footprint that has been violated is actually shown here. So it's on a H-bridge design that uses a couple of MOSFETs. So Q5 here is uh, what I'd like to check to make sure that this footprint uh, matches up with the footprint of the component that we've ordered. So what we need is to look at the schematic, how we need it to be laid out. We also need to go to our PCB, find Q5. It is right down here. This is what we'll be checking. Uh, so we'll have the schematic view of Q5, the footprint view of Q5, and we also need to have the data sheet for that component. So if I look at that component, it was the NTR45, so on and so on. It is this component. And the first thing I wanna look at is to make sure that our pinouts are correct. So the very top of the data sheet, you should see uh, a diagram that shows you which pin is the gate, which pin is the drain, and which pin is the source via their location on the footprint. So reading from bottom to the top, it is gate, drain, and source. So if we look at our PCB, we expect this to be the gate, this to be the drain, and this to be the source. And so we need that to match up to what we have in our schematic to make sure that the signals are correct. So looking at a schematic, this side of the transistor is the gate, and the gate needs to be connected to L2. Uh, and then the source is this side, which needs to be grounded, and the motor minus is our uh, drain. So if we go back to our data set, we're looking at gate, drain, and source. And we're going to verify that the signals in our schematic match up to where those signals should be in our PCB footprint. So we're looking for the order gate, drain, source and we need to see the signals l2 motor minus and then ground in that exact order so let's have a look do we have l2 as our first pin reading from bottom to top no we don't then we needed motor minus to be our pin three and we needed uh and we needed ground to be our pin two so as you can see the footprint here is out of order um, so unfortunately all three pins have been mixed up. How can this happen, you may ask? Well, it can happen with slightly different schematic symbols and the pin numbers for this schematic component uh, may not be in the order of gate, source, drain. Their pin connections may be gate, drain, source. And if there is a slight deviation, we could be getting errors in our footprints. We need to correct these. Fortunately, there's a method for correcting these within the schematic. So what do we need? We have to work out what pins here do we need to swap? Well, we know we need L2 to be pin one. So that means pin two on our schematic needs to actually go to pin one on the footprint. And similarly, we know that pin two needs to be grounded. So that means pin three in our schematic needs to go to pin two in our PCB. So pin two to pin one, and pin three to pin two. So let's make those two changes. So we go back to our schematic, double click the component, 
and you want to look at the footprint settings. So we go down to the bottom right here in the models menu, select the footprint and you want to click edit. So to change the pin mapping, select the pin map button in the top right. We recognized that pin two on our schematic needs to become pin one in our model and pin three in our schematic needs to become pin two. We need to make ground pin two. Then the only one left over is that pin one must become pin three. And we can check these, but that was what we found out through looking at our schematic and our PCB all together. So we'll save our changes and now we wish to update our PCB with these new pin mappings. So you can select design, update PCB document, and there's going to be some changes to make to our PCB. We want to execute those. Now we're looking at our PCB. Obviously we've made a bunch of changes. So the polygon that we poured, uh, we, we should probably shelve that so that we don't have to deal with these large green errors. So go to tools, polygon pours, and you want to look for shelve polygons. Uh, another violation that's popping up is our room. Usually when you make changes, uh, the room which holds most of our components will reappear. You can simply select this red object and press delete. So now let's zoom back in on Q5. So we've changed our pin mappings and as a result, we want to probably uh, remove the tracking that we previously had because it's now no longer correct. So I'll delete the tracks that are violations. And as you can see, there are new air wires drawn in telling us uh, how we can make our new connections. So we need to connect uh, L2 through to pin one. Uh, we need to connect uh, all the other pins. So let's, let's begin by selecting the top layer. Uh, I'll go to place interactive routing and let's begin uh, routing uh, with these new pin mappings. So I'll probably want about there and go through. Uh, so there's L2 routed up. Let's place our next pin, place interactive routing. And we need to connect pin three to motor minus. Fortunately, motor minus has a via just above here. So we can make that connection. And our second pin, which is ground, we know that when we connect our polygon pause, it will automatically be grounded for us. So what we need to do now is put our polygon pause back in. So now if I zoom into pin five, let's, let's go through our check again. So if I go to the data sheet for this particular MOSFET, the order is one, two, three, gate, source, drain. Now let's go to our schematic to see what signals we need to see at the gate, the source, and the drain. We need to see L2, ground, and motor minus. So let's look for that in order on our PCB. L2 is pin one, ground is pin two, motor minus is pin three. We have satisfied the correct outline for our footprint and the signals match up on our schematic and our PCB. So we've corrected this faulty footprint and it will now be useful for the designs. So this completes this screencast on solving some common errors with PCB design using Altium. I hope it's been of some use, thanks.